All right. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Zach Hilton. I'm a Gilbert City Council member, and I also happen to be a full-time firefighter paramedic in the city of Oakland. Um, so today we are joined by Chief uh, Jim Wyatt, who is the fire chief for the city of Gilroy. And we're joined by Claudia Rossi, who's the president of Santa Clara County Board of Education and a nurse herself. Um, so today we're going to um, go through a PowerPoint presentation by the chief. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about wildfire preparedness and the 4th of July safety for fireworks. And then after that, we'll do a round of questioning. If anybody has questions, they can answer the, you can ask those here. You can use the Q&A feature, you can use the chat feature, or you can raise your hand once we're finished. Um, and then I think we have some questions that were also submitted ahead of time and we'll, um, we'll, go, we'll go through those as well. So um, Chief, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, well, thank you uh, very much, council member. Uh, so I'm gonna do a, my screen share, so give me a moment. And I'm gonna bring up the PowerPoint so I can operate it. There we go. Can everyone okay? Great. Okay, so uh, just like uh, Council Member Hilton uh, stated, this is on wildfire preparation, as well as uh, 4th of July safety. And obviously that has a lot to do with fireworks. And um, so let me start off with the first slide. Uh, just last year, and uh, it, it hasn't even been a year, but uh, uh, 2020 was a was quite a year for wildfires, and in fact, there were mega fires that occurred uh, all over the state and right in our own backyard. The SEU uh, Lightning Complex fire. Uh, there were a total statewide of 9,639 wildfires. In fact, in one day, there was uh, close to 392 fires that were being battled by firefighters throughout the state. That's how bad it was. And that was on August 16th. It was over a three day period that the, the numbers of fires just grew exponentially. Over 4 billion acres were burned. And that's, a, that's one of the uh, records that we'd like not to repeat. Uh, 10,488 structures were destroyed. 31 people died and over $12 billion were lost. It was the third highest recorded loss in, in the state and it was staggering. Um, conditions right now uh, don't look like they're gonna improve much. We're now into a, another year of drought, severe drought I might add, that uh, has made the, the, uh, the landscape uh, that much more drier. And the conditions right now um, are the same. In fact, earlier in May, they were the same as they would have been in July of last year. So that's how dry it is. Not only is, is the grass already dead and dry, but uh, the brush itself is extremely dry, making it even more of a fire hazard to us. So, um, you know, as much as we we want to say that the fire department stands ready and willing to uh, to battle the blazes that go on. Uh, really, it's up to each individual person uh, in their own communities to help us to prevent firefighters uh, from fire, wildfires from actually happening. And so that's what the emphasis of today's um, review is going to be. Uh, I'll first start off by saying that um, all my sources come from uh, uh, the ones that you actually see up here. The Santa Clara County Fire Department has an excellent website on uh, wildfire preparation, uh, how to, um, to uh, uh, create a defensible space around your home and harden your home against fire, but also tips on what to do if you uh, have to be evacuated. And the exact same can be uh, said for CAL FIRE. They have a wonderful site, uh, very informative, and uh, of course their emphasis is not only on just wildfires around here, they talk about forest fires as well, where a lot of the uh, urban wildland interface is occurring. Uh, whole communities are, are into the trees right now. So uh, CAL FIRE has an excellent site as well. Um, also, just to, to emphasize that um, disaster preparation is every individual's responsibility, and that's the reason why you see Alert SCC. Uh, if you go onto that site, you can actually register your phone to get emergency alerts uh, within the county 
on a variety of uh, disaster issues. And they, they were um, quite pro prolifer prolific uh, last year when we had uh, the SEU fire and there were evacuations that had to be uh, done. And uh, so Alert SEC was, was central to that and no notifying everyone of what was going on. And last uh, but not least is, uh, is the Santa Clara County weed abatement um, uh, program. The number to call is 408-282-3145. If you see a hazard, or you can actually use their phone app, it's free, it's called Weed Hazard. And you can actually take a picture and enter in the address and do this all anonymously. And uh, weed abatement uh, inspectors will come out to the property and either validate what you're saying or talk to the homeowner about uh, uh, how to better prepare and um, get rid of some of, their, some of their weeds or their, their grass. So let's go into uh, the actual program. And this is um, from the state and from Santa Clara County and it's how to prepare for wildfire, ready, set, go. So the first thing is to get ready. In other words, make your home a defensible space. Uh, and I'm gonna be talking about zones, but uh, uh, the first one is zone one. That's from zero to five feet from structures that include your own home. You'll see that in the yellow line that surrounds the house. That's where, and I'm only briefly going over, there's, there's a list of probably about 15 things you can do, but. I'm gonna go over the most important ones that, that I thought uh, should be mentioned. Cleaning your roof and gutters, as simple as that sounds, a lot of people forget that when they're uh, around a lot of foliage, uh, if, particularly after um, dry spell, there's a lot of leaves and needles, if you're around pine trees, that fall into your, your gutters. And those are uh, extremely uh, hazardous uh, if you were to have an ember, uh, fall on there, or worse yet, uh, some illegal fireworks that, uh, like a bottle rocket that lands into your gutter, and it can, it can literally catch your roof on fire. So uh, cleaning those out routinely is uh, one of the essential things for making your home defensible. Also removing debris around the walls. Uh, sometimes people stack firewood against their homes. That's a big no-no in, um, in the wild land uh, urban interface areas. You want to remove con combustible material like that uh, separate from your home. And you also want to remove branches that are over your roof, particularly dead branches, uh, and cover your attic and eave vents with, um, with some, some sort of uh, screen. Uh, they, uh, they recommend uh, that it be about an eighth of an inch uh, openings uh, for your screen. Zone two, that extends out to 30 feet from your home or from other structures. And again, I'm only highlighting, there's probably about 15 items on this one, but I'm gonna just list, list them real quick here. So remove all dead plants. That kind of goes without saying, but you'd be surprised how many people uh, don't uh, go about removing that dead uh, juniper or dead tree that's next to the house. And again, that's a huge fire hazard to you. Remove all dead grass and weeds, uh, separate trees and brush from your patio furniture and wood, wood piles. In other words, don't put them all in one location, try to separate them out. And uh, um, that way uh, you don't have a big uh, um, area that can, that can catch fire and then cause a lot of uh, uh, thermal heat that will catch your house on fire. And also uh, trimming uh, branches 10 feet from other trees. And we'll talk a little bit about, about that in just a moment, but. Uh, just trimming your, your branches uh, will help out in reducing the fire load on your property. So let's uh, talk about that in particular. So making your defensible space on a zone three, this extends out to 100 feet. And a couple of things to remember is that you want to mow your grass to a maximum of four inches height. Some people complain that they already did that and yet the fire department or weed abatement comes around their property and says, no, your grass is still too tall. Well, the problem with mowing your grass early in the season, which we do recommend, uh, is that it, uh, as the next rain hits, and we did have a couple of days, not, not a whole lot of rain, but a couple of late, late rainfall, that caused the grass to grow a little bit uh, taller. So you may have mowed it down to maybe just even two inches, and then over the course of a month or so, 
it grew past the four inch mark. And so we're asking you to go back out and um, mow your grass. I will say one thing about mowing, uh, we had uh, three fires start last year um, in Gilroy in the uh, outer areas because people were mowing their, their grass like we asked them to, but they were doing it in the late afternoon sun when it was mostly, um, mostly dry. And so when their mower uh, struck a rock, it caused a spark and that spark uh, caused a, a grass fire. So if you're going to mow, the best time to mow is, is early in the morning when the dew is still on the, uh, on the grass. And if it does, uh, if you do hit a, um, a rock and cause a spark, it won't uh, cause, a, cause a fire to, uh, to suddenly uh, shoot up. And don't forget that in the afternoons, we, we get uh, um, a, a northwest wind that blows, sometimes howls through Gilroy. So uh, you can really make a, a, a very small problem big just by uh, doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. Um, horizontal spacing between trees and shrubs. Uh, you want to check uh, the website, both uh, Cal Fire and Santa Clara County's uh, fire department's uh, site. They show you uh, the differences in, um, in distances. They actually extend further the, the higher the slope or the more, uh, uh, more at an angle your hillside is. But if you were just going with uh, flat land, um, uh, you, you notice that the shrubs are um, two times their height for their distance. If you've got a shrub in between, I would get rid of it. it this helps reduce the fire load on your property and helps protect your, your home from fire. Uh, your trees uh, certainly need to be about 10 feet apart. And um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about how far up the tree you want to trim the branches. So let's go to uh, the next page. This is all still part of zone three, which extends to 100 feet. Uh, oops, back up. Uh, so vertical clearance. Uh, vertical clearance on uh, trees is a minimum of six feet to the branch to the ground. And if you have a large uh, tree or shrub, it's three times its height for the minim, um, minimum distance um, uh, from the branches of the tree to the, to the brush that's below it. So uh, just remember that uh, the idea there is to reduce the laddering effect that fire has uh, jumping from one small item to a larger item to a much larger item. If you um, uh, create the space between what's combustible, meaning the branches and the and the um, uh, the leaves versus the trunk itself and the ground, you'll reduce the the possibility of having a uh, a wildfire really take off in your property. And I will just mention, um, does it does it work? Because people have asked me, you know, hey, I, uh, I grass still burns even if, even though it's two inches tall. That's entirely true. And uh, we've seen it before, but here's the thing. Um, the taller the grass, the faster it burns, the higher the flame height. And uh, if, there, if it's being wind driven, um, it's very tough for us to stop it. If it's only two inches tall and it's caught fire, it's slower moving. And even if it's wind driven, we can knock it down very easily with a shovel or uh, with, a, with a, um, a small hose line. It doesn't take much to stop a small uh, grass fire. It, it takes a whole lot more when you've got uh, grass that's waist high and you're seeing flames uh, shooting up 30 feet. Uh, you can't get close enough to knock it down quick enough to, to stop it in some of the winds that we've, that we've experienced here. So um, the next one is uh, getting set. So it's all part of ready, set, go. There's three steps. Step one is to create a wildland action plan. So uh, each homeowner should uh, take the time, go to these websites that I already mentioned and um, download their wildland uh, action plan. And it gives you the, uh, the things that you need to address and consider, such as including an evacuation planning for your home, your family, and your pets. And for people in uh, larger pieces of property, where they have livestock, you need to come up with a plan for those as well. Uh, we, we, we pride ourselves on fast moving. We don't have time to uh, save the animals when we're trying to uh, 
beat the fire from taking out whole swaths of neighborhoods. So if this is really your responsibility to, to come up with that plan, but will certainly help you. And there are organizations that can help with, uh, with uh, large uh, livestock moving and, um, and placement. Uh, step two, assemble a emergency supply kit. And this, is, this all goes a part of disaster planning in general for earthquakes and power outages uh, and flooding. So uh, for each person in your household, you wanna make sure you have a supply kit. I recommend a backpack for each person. And um, uh, step three is, uh, let me just back up on the backpack. Backpack would contain some essential items like some food and water, but also uh, identification and money, credit cards, um, maybe even some pictures that you, uh, that you value. That way you can stuff the bag and you can go. It's called a go bag. And um, it might even include uh, extra flashlight batteries and maybe even a power pack for your phone. These are all uh, essential items that would go into your emergency supply kit. All right, so going to, uh, down to step three, uh, fill out your family communication plan. Uh, this includes important um, evacuation and contact information. You want to have uh, uh, several places, uh, your first priority, your second priority, your third priority to evacuate to. And then uh, how are you going to communicate? Sometimes it's easy to communicate um, instead of from cell phone to cell phone, somebody you communicate to out of state where you're able to get a hold of them, but not someone locally. That uh, it's a phenomenon that can happen. And uh, that way if you have a central person that's uh, outside the area or outside the state that you can contact. The other people of your family that may not have been home at the time that the disaster struck know to con uh, contact that person too. So these are all great ideas for, like I said, dealing with all kinds of disaster, but this is obviously focused on uh, wildland or wildfire uh, preparation. Okay, and so GO is the third item for preparing for a wildfire. And of course, GO means uh, evacuate. So uh, you wanna remove your evacuation plan checklist. You remember you pre-did that. So now you have a fire that maybe is not too far away. You can see the picture there and you see this fire is heading towards you. Uh, you don't have to wait to be told if you see a fire right in your, uh, in your neighborhood. You go ahead and uh, go to your evacuation plan checklist and then you ensure that you get your emergency supply kit, your backpack, throw it into your vehicle. Don't forget to cover yourself up and protect yourself against heat and flying embers. Uh, we recommend cotton, uh, not synthetic. Uh, cotton uh, takes a little bit longer to burn. It's uh, more apt to protect you against the heat uh, versus melting. Um, so uh, just something to consider. And then uh, uh, long pants, long sleeve shirt, uh, shoes and boots, having those uh, uh, handy and available, you might even put them in part of, uh, as part of your um, emergency supply list is throwing in an extra pair of shoes in case you, uh, were, uh, you're not able to get home right away and get your your boots or shoes on, perhaps you were out in flip-flops or whatever, enjoying the summer day. Uh, dry bandana over your face. We recommend it, it's dry, don't wet it. Um, the heat has a, has a tendency from a fire to uh, cause steam and steam can cause damage to your lungs. So it's a dry bandana is what you want. Uh, goggles and glasses uh, to protect you against smoke and, and embers. And then of course, locate your pets and take them with you. And there you see, uh, somebody with a fire chief's hat on, but um, uh, you, you definitely wanna grab your animals uh, that, you, uh, that you wanna escape uh, with you as well. And don't worry about uh, their food supply if you, if you haven't already packed it. Um, if it's time to go, just grab them and, and get out. Uh, the, how you get out is uh, you should pre-plan um, your evacuation uh, routes. Uh, sometimes uh, local um, uh, firefighter, uh, fire departments or uh, law enforcement uh, can give you some evacuation points, but uh, really if uh, you know of more than one road to escape, that's a good idea because the road that you may have pre-planned, maybe there's um, uh, uh, wires, uh, electrical wires that have gone over the top of it, or maybe the fire has already reached that, that part of the road, and you might have to think of a second way out. So 
always think of uh, in terms of your primary way out and a contingency if you can't get out that particular way. Okay, um, I am going to go back uh, to this uh, when there's if there's any questions, but I wanted to um, just reiterate that uh, I've got a little bit more to share with you uh, before we get into fireworks. But now that we're there, let's go let's go ahead and talk about the Fourth of July celebration and fireworks safety. And uh, I'll just start off with that all fireworks are dangerous. All all illegal fireworks are dangerous. Uh, any fireworks that explode or that shoot off into the air, those are uh, illegal by nature and uh, dangerous to boot. Uh, they can cause great bodily harm. And every year we, we end up uh, with uh, large grass fires, small grass fires, and homes that actually burn as a result of illegal fireworks. And that's throughout all of Santa Clara County. Um, Children and adults uh, also receive uh, severe burns or injuries and burns. And when I say severe injuries, sometimes those injuries, uh, you wouldn't have thought they would have gotten them, uh, such as uh, a explosive device like a, uh, an M80. Uh, we've seen people actually lose their fingers as a result of an M80 because they thought that the fuse was long enough or wasn't gonna explode so quickly and they were still holding it. Or sometimes they'll pick up one of the mortars which um, shoots the fireworks into the air thinking that it might look neat to actually hold it and not realize that out from the bottom of it shoots the, uh, uh, the uh, propellant that shoots it up into the air and they lose um, uh, their fingers or they, or they get severely burned. So uh, this is really, uh, uh, you know, just really emphasizing that uh, fireworks as, um, as amazing as they look at times can cause all sorts of uh, harm when uh, you're working with um, or playing with illegal fireworks. Homes uh, are damaged or destroyed, already mentioned that, and communities are threatened by the wildfires that are, have been caused by illegal fireworks. Uh, last year, uh, the, um, over in the East Foothills uh, of Morgan Hill, it was suspected that it was fireworks that started that fire and it ended up uh, evacuating hundreds of people and um, threatening uh, many, many homes. And we just don't wanna um, uh, to cause that again this year, especially now that the drought has taken its toll on all the uh, trees and brush out there. Uh, Gilroy fireworks safety, I wanna talk about that. Um, if you're uh, purchasing um, legal, and I'm emphasizing legal fireworks, you can only purchase those in Gilroy and they're only for um, use in Gilroy. If you purchase them, even though they're safe and sane uh, and bring them outside the city limits, you're doing something that's illegal. You're not supposed to do that. It's just for fireworks within the city. Gilroy is the only city that sells uh, the safe and sane fireworks. And I will say that um, having uh, uh, dealt with uh, fires uh, over numerous years here in Gilroy, every single one of them uh, were the result of illegal fireworks, not the safe and sane. The safe and sane do not explode and they don't uh, shoot up in the air. And there's actually 15 booths that uh, we have. Uh, the uh, safe and sane fireworks, you're able to use them between July 1st and July 4th. So we ended up with a three-day weekend. You can use them uh, anytime during that weekend and you can purchase, uh, purchase them at, like I said, at the 15 approved uh, booths that uh, help benefit uh, charities throughout uh, your right. Uh, only an adult should light the fireworks, only in front of your home, uh, such as your driveway or the, the immediate street area. Uh, do not use public schools or public parks to bring your safe and sane fireworks uh, to use, uh, stick around your home. Uh, do not use fireworks outside the uh, Gilroy city limits. I already mentioned that once, but I'll just say it again, that they're only for within the limits of Gilroy, the city limits of Gilroy. Do not use safe and sane fireworks near hillside areas. And in particular, um, uh, Rancho Hills is typically the uh, the, um, the last street that you could possibly use them, anything beyond that, you start getting into the, um, the west foothills and certainly south of the city, um, those foothills, 
any place where you see the foothills, it's illegal to use even the safe and sane fireworks that uh, Gary allows you to purchase. You can only uh, use them within the city limits and they can't be against any of the uh, hillsides. Fireworks, again, that shoot in the air or explode are illegal and dangerous no matter where you do them. So um, just to emphasize that. And I will add that, um, uh, you, you know, we, we hear of people that uh, use, well, I hear them all the time. I, I'm not, I'm not uh, blind to the fact that people will uh, blow off illegal fireworks throughout the year, but they do cause uh, a problem to uh, uh, particularly our veterans. I just want to mention that uh, PTSD, uh, I've, I have friends that uh, fought in the Iraq war and the, um, and the Afghan war and uh, they know that around 4th of July, they're, they're gonna just have to put in earplugs or close their, uh, stay indoors and try to stay away from the loud noises. But uh, throughout the year, it gets uh, pretty unnerving for them because uh, they don't know when they're gonna uh, explode and they bring them back to um, the experiences they had in wartime. Uh, also our pets suffer as a result of it, particularly during the 4th of July, uh, both immediately before and after too where we get numerous pets that run away as a result of the, uh, the fireworks. So it can cause uh, a lot of havoc, unnecessarily so. And particularly if you're gonna use them throughout the year. Um, the safe and sane, you're only allowed to use them for uh, July 1st through the 4th. But uh, obviously people are, have been using illegal fireworks throughout the year. And like I said, it's caused um, many, many problems as a result of that and some fires uh, for us that we prefer not to have. If you have illegal fireworks, or, you, or I'm sorry, if you know of someone that's blowing off illegal fireworks, there is a phone number to call. It's the non-emergency number to the uh, PD Communications Center. The number is 408-846-0350. And uh, I'm also gonna uh, mention an app for you to, uh, to utilize as well, but uh, that's the number to report for illegal fireworks. You want to give a description of the person and house numbers are also nice. They help us to pinpoint uh, who the person is that's using the illegal fireworks. Um, Santa Clara County firework safety. Um, uh, again, all fireworks are illegal throughout the county and uh, Gilroy only allows um, safe and sane fireworks. Uh, if you report illegal fireworks using the Nail M app, it's a phone app, and it allows you to actually uh, take a picture or a video of the person and upload it onto the site so that um, law enforcement uh, has some sort of proof of, of who lit it off. And that's one of our, our problems is that by the time we get there, the per person's um, maybe already gone, uh, maybe they're not uh, lighting the fireworks in our presence, or, um, or we don't get a really good description hard to, to, uh, uh, to enforce that. But when we know who it is, when we have an address, uh, we can certainly uh, write a citation. Um, you, you, uh, it, you know, obviously I keep talking about don't use illegal fireworks and only in Gilroy can you get the safe and sane, but throughout Santa Clara County, there's all sorts of approved fireworks show. And these are great family events. Uh, now that um, we're starting to see changes with COVID and uh, gatherings again, um, it's, it's actually bringing the, um, the celebration atmosphere back to us. And I encourage people to, with their families, to go to these uh, fireworks shows and, um, and enjoy uh, professional fireworks. They're, they're uh, obviously the ones that explode, but they're uh, much safer. They're in a very. Uh, they're done very safely by technicians who are specially trained, and um, the shows can be spectacular. Particularly the one here in Gilroy, and we are having one in Gilroy on the Fourth of July, just as we always do. They typically happen uh, after uh, sunset, um, around nine o'clock, nine thirty, right in there. You'd, you'd have to check the website for the exact time, and uh, it's typically over by the uh, Gilroy High School. And so uh, just something to uh, think about uh, for your family. It uh, arrived there early, so you get a good seat. But even if you're uh, not in the vicinity, you can, you can certainly uh, 
uh, in the other side streets, you can um, view them uh, safely from, uh, from the sidewalk. So it, you don't have to be inside a concentration of people to enjoy the fireworks that, that Gilroy has. And I know that all sorts of other communities are doing the exact same thing. And with that, I'll uh, entertain any questions you might have. Thank you, Chief. Um, actually, I have I have two questions before we go into some of these other prep ones. And if and if anybody wants to ask a question, just you know, raise your hand as well. Can you explain real briefly what a red flag day means, and what a, like when somebody sees it on the news today's a red flag day, and what that would mean for um, our residents here in Gilroy? That's a great question, uh, Councilman. And and you know what. Um, Coming from you, I would expect that question. <laughs> um, it, being from Oakland or as an Oakland firefighter, they, they have much of the same problems we have in Gilroy and, uh, and even more so with some of the, uh, the wildland interface. So red flags mean a lot to, to Oakland residents and they mean a lot to Gilroy residents. So this is what it means. It means that there's a, um, because of the weather system, the weather pattern, that it's a uh, critical or extreme fire danger for that day. And sometimes it can be a group of days. What makes it extreme? Um, I've already mentioned about drought conditions, but we're already there. So not every day is a red, red flag day, but excessive heat, um, low, low humidity, usually in the teens and high winds. And Gilroy is no, um, uh, no exception to the high winds. We've seen winds kick up as, as, as much as 30 to 40 miles an hour and sometimes gusts up to 50 to 60 miles an hour. And in those sort of conditions, it can be extremely hazardous. So you'll, you'll, you'll hear on the media, they'll talk about uh, red flag days. Um, fortunately, we don't have that many in Gilroy in the town itself where it where it hits the, the greatest is in our foothills, both east and west of us. And that may not be exactly um, where you live, but it doesn't mean that the fire danger in it isn't very high for those people that live there. And uh, there's nothing to say that with some of the wind conditions that it couldn't blow down into the very uh, residences uh, within the city of Gilroy limits. So um, red flag days mean a lot, and it's really important that you pay attention if it's a Santa Clara County or if it's a, a Santa Cruz County red flag day, because uh, the Santa Cruz County hills, as you know, uh, uh, are surround us as well. They're just uh, uh, just another five miles away and that five to 10 miles away. And it doesn't seem like it's that, or it seems like a, a long distance, but if you had a wind driven fire that's blowing in a, uh, from a west to an east direction coming from Santa Cruz County, it, it could be uh, very alarming for us. And we've had those happen before as well. So um, very good question. And uh, did, I, did I answer everything you, you wanted to know about that? Yes, sir, perfect. And just as a reminder that, you know, those are days too that we don't wanna burn. Yes. Um, we don't wanna go out and clear or mow or do any of that outside stuff. Um, the ne next question I have, and this actually somebody, my neighbor asked me this the other day, if we, if somebody does find illegal fireworks, let's say they, they find them on the street, they find them in the home, they're cleaning out their home, their garage, or they just have um, some that are left over um, and they want to drop those off. Is there a safe place in Gilroy besides calling the non-emergency number that folks can drop off? Yeah, we, uh, at each of the, our, our fire stations, we do accept uh, fireworks and we'll properly destroy, uh, uh, dispose of them. When I say destroy, we, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, we don't physically go out and destroy them ourselves. That's something that uh, that I know the uh, Santa Clara County Bomb Squad takes care of. But we do uh, collect them and we put them in a safe location. Um, and uh, no questions asked. We just uh, we just take them. And um, uh, please do not. Uh, uh, fireworks are one thing. Uh, we actually had one person bring a pipe bomb to the fire station, and so. Uh, if, uh, if you see something that looks not like a fireworks, call us out, don't touch it, and uh, we'll actually get the bomb squad out there to get it properly disposed of. Um, it, it's, I know that sounds crazy, but sometimes uh, uh, you might get some, uh, some, some uh, curious teenager who 
uh, saw something on TV and he thought he would try to make something and then uh, decided not to do anything with it and then just left it inside the garage. So please, um, yeah, we'll take the fireworks. Uh, anything else, um, please call, call us out and we'll, uh, we'll uh, get it properly disposed of. Yeah, that, you make a great point because a lot of times it's, uh, it's families that might be cleaning out the house of their, of their grandparents or the elders yeah. of, their, of their home and they end up not knowing what is what. So that's, that's a good resource that, that you can provide to our residents. Um, so I'll, I'll turn it over to Claudia. Um, Claudia, I, I believe you have some questions that were pre-asked ahead of time. Um, so yes. go for it. Thank you so much. Um, and the first question um, that we had is, how will I know what neighborhoods will be evacuated and how will I be notified? Um, and I also wanted to add to that, Chief, um, are the notifications made in different languages when you sign up for the notification system? Do you know if there's an option to receive messages in other languages? You know, um, Claudia, that's a really good question. And I, I, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that um, our social media uh, that the city um, has can provide it in, in the two languages, in English and in Spanish. But as far as alert uh, SCC, um, I, I want to say I believe it does, but I, I don't quote me on that. Um, by all means, uh, check the, the website, but it's an excellent question. And I'll just say that um, it is very pertinent to Gilroy, uh, given the fact that we have such a high number of Spanish speaking only residents. So um, it is some, uh, definitely a concern. Um, but I do know our, our city uh, website uh, has both English and Spanish. So that would be uh, one location. But getting back to your original question, so um, who makes that determination of where and when uh, folks need to be evacuated? Well, typically it's the fire department and or law enforcement making that uh, joint decision. And they'll make a determination based on uh, roads, landmarks and conditions. And I'll just use last year's SEU fire. fire. It, was, uh, it, was, it started to the north of us and started uh, moving uh, in a south uh, westerly direction. So there was time and we started uh, 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 giving notification to people but uh, when we saw that it was, it was definitely um, moving in a rapid, a more rapid rate, pretty soon you saw whole swaths of communities being told that um, uh, to being warned that they should start preparing for an evacuation. They weren't told to evacuate just yet, but uh, so, so that was all through the coordinated uh, processes of the county and the local fire jurisdictions, as well as uh, sheriffs and local law enforcement. Uh, once they, they make that determination, they're gonna alert uh, both S, uh, alert SEC. So you'll, uh, if you've already pre-registered on your phone, you'll get an alert. And I got numerous ones of those when, uh, when it was determined that uh, there was an evacuation uh, warning and then eventually evacuation order. And I'll talk about the two, the difference between those two. Uh, also, uh, local television and radio. Uh, so uh, that was extremely helpful to get the message out to them. That was the responsibility of the um, Office of Emergency Management uh, for the county. And they did an excellent job of making sure that the local uh, television and radio stations were notified what particular areas uh, based on roads and what sort of conditions they were experiencing so that people had time to prepare and get out. Um, so, uh, and when it comes time for the actual order, um, if, if, if sure, um, and other law enforcement personnel have the time and, and you'll get that with some of the fire personnel as well, they'll actually go into the neighborhoods and knock on doors. Uh, I know that, uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, the, uh, East Foothills in Gilroy and in Morgan Hill, uh, the PD got on their bullhorns and uh, made announcements that way. Um, they tried to get as many residents notified in a rapid way uh, possible. But the good thing was is that there was time to help prepare those residents where we could uh, to uh, pack up. But in some instances where um, the fire was fast moving, uh, it became simply a, a evacuation order. So um, 
Did thank I answer? You, did I answer? Yes. Your okay. Yes, uh, Chief Wyatt. Thank you so much. And and you know, I my family was one of those families um, that had to evacuate. Um, we received um, advisories before the actual order. And one of the things that I did uh, was to make sure that I take with me social security cards, birth certificates, um, things that I wouldn't want to have to reapply for, passport, and I put them all together and um, there's nothing to motivate you more than the potential of losing your home and everything that's in it. And so, um, and I, you mentioned earlier pictures. Um, and so I, I certainly uh, felt at the time um, the urgency and it's a surreal experience. It's, it, it's really terrifying um, because you hear about these fires in other communities when you're that family looking around and leaving and wondering if you'll be able to come back to your home, it's, um, it's a very difficult, painful thing, which is the reason why we're having this forum today. Um, because if there's anything within our power to, to, to prevent these situations, the idea that something that tragic, the loss of life, loss of property, um, that we have the power to avoid it and that there are still people that do not um, is something that I will never comprehend. But I think we should continue to have these forums to just keep reminding people that this is life and death. Claudia, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I, I, on, a, on a personal note, my sister and my brother-in-law and my nephew were also in the uh, East Coast Gilroy Foothills when they had to evacuate and my my brother-in-law has a business and he had time to to get um, all his vehicles his business uh, vehicles into uh, down into the valley floor um, but some people don't have that didn't have that much time and they lost their homes in spite of their best efforts so it really is a uh, uh, every individual resident's responsibility to do as much as they can before the wildfire happens to uh, prepare, uh, pre-pack, uh, pre-plan, and then when it's time to go, it's time to go. Um, nothing's worse than, uh, and I know this occurred uh, in the Oakland Hills fire years and years ago, uh, to have uh, a panic situation where everyone's trying to get out at the same time and then there's mm -hmm. traffic jams and, and it causes even more panic. Uh, an orderly evacuation is, is what we prefer. We try to give people as much time. And I will say that you'll see us pull the trigger, so to speak, to evacuate people sooner than we, we have in years past. And primarily because uh, the fire behavior has gotten uh, even more unpredictable because of the extremely dry conditions. So it makes it even more important that every person um, not just ignore this and go, yeah, I'll get to it. You know, after today's session, if you, um, Go, go down to the store and you say, I'm gonna get um, four backpacks, one for each of, each of us and start packing them. That way you, you've, you've already done the first thing. And um, it's, it's that, uh, that effort in the very beginning that will um, pay dividends when you have to leave uh, at a moment's notice. Thank you, Chief. And, and you mentioned this, but it's, it's one of our prepared questions. Um, if I receive notification to evacuate my home, how much time do I have to get out? Okay, so that's a really good question. And um, I'll just say that it's, it depends on the type of evacuation that, that's being asked of you. Uh, the first one is an evacuation warning. Some people call that a voluntary evacuation. What that simply means is it's time to get ready uh, to leave if things get worse. So um, if you already feel that you're unsafe because you see the fire right across the street from you, well, get out now. Um, but if you know that uh, the fire is coming and yet there's still time, now's the time to pack. Um, you you want to try to pack just one vehicle, not try to pack every single vehicle because you can't take them all with you. And um, and only those essential things or personal things like this, we talked about uh, social security cards and, and uh, credit cards and passports, 
those things that uh, you're going to need um, post fire, but certainly um, uh, uh, you know personal items like pictures and that you want to have that all set to go. And then, um, like I uh, like I mentioned about my brother-in-law, he went ahead and had all his um, uh, work equipment moved down to the valley floor, uh, not waiting to be told to evacuate. He knew that it was coming, so he might have, he took the he made good use of his time. The next one is an evacuation order. That's that's a mandatory evacuation. Uh, that means leave now. We're not asking you to leave an hour from now. We're asking you to leave right now. That means uh, with what you've got, if you've got your bag with you, go ahead and throw it in your car and go. Uh, it means that conditions have changed or con conditions have gotten a lot worse. And uh, we do not want um, people to panic. Uh, we want them to remain calm, not speed away. And certainly if you cause a vehicle accident, you're gonna, you're gonna slow everyone getting out. Number one, you might get hurt. And then number two, uh, it slows firefighters from coming in. So we, we want an orderly evacuation. We know that it will take several hours for a large community to get through single single roads, but that's the reason why we, like I said before, we're gonna be pulling the trigger sooner to evacuate people, even in a mandatory evacuation, so that uh, we have plenty of time to get people out so that everyone gets out safely. And we're gonna, oh. go ahead. Chief Wyatt, um, I do have some elderly neighbors um, that don't drive. Quite frankly, they don't drive anymore. They rely on their neighbors for rides or they may take uh, a taxi to their doctor's appointment. Um, if I am an elderly person, I don't drive, um, what do I do? Yeah, this is part of the, the pre-planning that I talked about, pre-evacuation planning. Get uh, if you can contact your neighbors, contact um, your your family members, people that you rely on, and you would probably be one of the first ones to leave, uh, even if it's voluntary. Don't wait until it becomes an order, because now it's going to be tough to try to find you in time uh, to make all the arrangements to pull you out. And you'll find that the firefighters are great at helping and doing the rescuing, but we can only go so far if we take you all the way down to the valley floor, we have no one to fight the fires. So you can't rely on the firefighters to, to uh, take you out. You really need to, to depend on, not that we won't, I'm just saying that um, uh, we, we'll have other priorities as well. And so uh, a little bit of pre-planning, getting a hold of relatives and leaving early, I, I would strongly suggest that the elderly or the people that uh, with disabilities uh, should do uh, sooner than later. That would be the essential um, central part of pre-planning. Thank you, Chief Wyatt. And once we evacuate, where do we go? That's, a, that's another really good question. Um, part of your pre-evacuation uh, package is to find out from family members who live out of the area, can you go to their house? Uh, can, you, can you stay in um, an, another city that is safe away from the fire? Uh, if none of that is possible, or at least if uh, the emergency was so great that you had to leave right away, uh, each city has uh, evacuation centers that they pre-designated. Uh, for Gilroy, we've got uh, Gilroy um, High School, and we have Christopher High School. We have uh, even uh, Sorosano Middle School as, a, as an alternate. Um, but I can't say that these are going to be for sure places to evacuate to because the fire may be heading that direction and the smoke be maybe so overwhelming that that would be a bad location to send somebody to. So um, it, we have pre-designated sites, but there can be other sites within the city or if needed outside of our own city that we would send people to. So we would let, let you know um, uh, that's again where uh, television and radio will be essential. Uh, Gilroy has its own um, emergency radio channel, AM channel, uh, 1610 it's, is its number, and uh, they'll give evacuation information as well. So, um, and also don't forget your alert SEC. They can actually uh, uh, tell you where in your local community where an evacuation center has been set up. And that we do in coordination with, of course, the Red Cross, who did a terrific job last year, and I'm sure they're they're uh, well on their way to preparing for this year. Thank you, uh, Chief uh, Wyatt. And, and before I hand it over, I just 
um, as a member of the community that was evacuated, and I, I just have to express my sincerest thank you for the heroic work of, of the firefighters. Um, you no know, words fail um, to say how much our community uh, is blessed to have all of you. I, um, I think that we need to continue this outreach. Uh, we need to have more of these forums to bring more information. And even if it's the same information, if one person that hears this uh, changes their behavior to avoid a fire, um, we're not only saving lives and property, but I know that the aftermath, the weeks following these fires, um, my daughter has asthma, I have asthma, and it was very, very difficult. Uh, the weeks and weeks of just feeling sick and, and, and dealing with, with um, the poor air quality. That was pretty traumatic, I have to say. So thank you, Chief. I give it back to you, Councilman Hilton. Thank you. Um, I, I did look up the uh, SEC alert and um, it is in different languages, the instructions but the text messages and calling information right now is just in English, oh. but they, but they give you enough preparation to know. And they, they explain it in other languages that if you get a call from here, or if you get a text, it's an emergency and um, you know, ha have part of that pre plan but the texts are usually pretty short, short enough that you could translate it if you, if you, if you needed to. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate you being here today, chief. Um, and, and you too, Claudia. Um, this is a great, uh, great talk right under an hour. Um, we'll, we'll try our hardest to spread this around the community. Um, and Chief, if there's any last words that, that you want to um, you want to say, please feel free. Thank you very much. I, I just can't thank both of you enough. This is the, the second time that I've participated. Uh, first one was with COVID. And thank, thank goodness we're seeing the tail end of that. Um, uh, and I'll just say that it's uh, efforts uh, that you, uh, Council Member Hilton and, and you, Claudia, um, taking the time to really educate our community. Um, there's only so much that, that, that I can do as a, as a, as a fire chief. We, we try to get the message out there, but really the forums that uh, you've provided, um, I, I think are essential uh, for, um, uh, for our community. And uh, it speaks volumes of the care that you have for uh, fire safety, for uh, uh, fire work safety, and certainly the, the general uh, well-being of our community. And I, and I can't uh, thank you enough for that. And I'll just uh, also say to the community itself, Yoroi, um, uh, we, have, we have been through some pretty um, tough times. And I'll just say uh, all the way from the, uh, just two years ago with the Garlic Festival shooting and uh, the mega fire that was in our own backyard. And just prior to that, where there was a smaller one in the middle of a pandemic. And yet this community has really risen up. I, I, this is a, I'm, a, I'm proud to be uh, a resident of Gilroy. I'm proud to be the fire chief in Gilroy. And I'll just say that um, if I had anything to point to, um, Gilroy has one of the highest rates in the county of uh, vaccination. I use it as a proof of, of our, our sense of uh, belonging and community and uh, willingness to help each other out. I see it every day um, and I see us recovering. And I just know that, uh, uh, you know, we're gonna do, we're gonna get through this uh, fire season. Um, we're gonna uh, band together. We're gonna put a stop to uh, the things that uh, put us at greater risk. and. Again, I just appreciate the, the opportunity to, to speak to everyone about, uh, about this important topic. And Chief Wyatt, one more, one more thing that the firefighters that vaccinated so many members of our community at the Gilroy Senior Center, that was amazing. And um, I know that the community uh, particularly appreciated um, knowing that our firefighters were there vaccinating. As a matter of fact, I, I, saw, I saw a number of people when given the choice, they opted for the firefighters. They said, we want that firefighter to vaccinate me. I, I, I saw that and it was a beautiful, these were beautiful moments because we've been through so much to be right. away from one another. And um, so thank you to the firefighters that 
came out for so many hours every day to participate in vaccinating our community. And that wasn't enough for you. You wanted to do more and you also um, were vaccinating people who were not able to leave their home. So I, I, in the last 30 seconds, you wanna share with us a little bit about what your firefighters did to make sure that people who can't leave their home were vaccinated as well. Well, in 30 seconds, I'll just say, um, you know, they're heroes. Um, I, I don't know, I don't say that lightly. Uh, we have excellent firefighter medics. We have excellent firefighter EMTs. Even our EMTs that have been around for years that um, didn't have to step up, they were one of our top vaccinators. And so it just shows the uh, their commitment to, um, they live here too. It's just, uh, they, they want their, their friends and their neighbors and their families to, to do well. And so I just saw, saw that in their commitment. And I'll just say with our in-home vaccination, we, we just got through with our last group uh, day before yesterday. And um, not that there couldn't be more, but uh, I'll just say that uh, it, it, it ended just at the right time because now we can apply our attentions towards uh, fires, which are coming our way very shortly. So thank you very much for all of that. Okay, well, thank you everybody for joining us today and um, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you, bye.